Hello students, in this video we are going to study about lesson number 5 that is global climatic change for standard 11th science students. This chapter is totally based on the climate and how the climate is making an impact on that particular region, area and what is the climatic condition in particular range. Okay, to understand that first we need to understand what is the exact difference between the climate as well as the weather. Many a times we uh, very usually we say yeah today's climate is, today's weather is but no, there is a change in climate as well as weather. Now, what is a weather? Weather is nothing but it is just a short term condition of the atmosphere. Means what is the weather now at present at my place? What is the weather after one hour? What will be the weather after two hours? Okay, means it is a continuous procedure. It is a short term process. But if you take into the consideration regarding the climate, Climate is always the average of weather, okay, means when, when many weather predictions come together, average of all those weather predictions will be considered as a climate. So, climate is nothing but it is the average weather conditions over a long period of time, okay. Now, basically the study of weather is always called as meteorology. Whenever any person, he studies about weather, that particular thing is called as meteorology. Whereas the study of climate, if you study related to climate, then definitely it is going to be called as climatology. Okay, so this is how it is going to be ranging. Now, we will start with this lesson. First of all, we, we see that the differences in 2015 are above the rest of the given years. This shows that the average temperature of the earth is rising and scientists around the world have collected more than centuries of temperature of record. These analysis all point to rise of the close to 0 0.8 degrees Celsius in the average surface air temperature of the earth over the last century. Now you just have a look at this particular map which is already given to you. Now in this map you have the differences in temperature in the case of degrees of Celsius from 0 to 1.2. You have months like J for January, F for February, M for March, A for April. Okay. So from January to December that is D you have the years. The years will be starting from 1985 to 2015. Okay. So which year has the least difference? that you have to find out based on this. Okay, what is the difference between the mean temperature of the 20th century and the temperature in 2015th of the century? So you just have to calculate the mean by taking the total and dividing, dividing it by 3. What do the temperatures differ in the different months? So you can see that each and every time there is a difference in the temperature. Now if you see in January, the temperature is 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. But the, if you see in the same year, if you see in the case of February, the temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. Again in the May, it is rising. It is 0 0.2. Again in the April, it is somewhat declining. Means the temperature is continuously changing in this particular case. Okay. Now, how do the scientists calculate the average temperature? Now, how do the scientists understand that what is the exact temperature on a particular surface of the earth? To get the complete picture of the earth's temperature, the scientists combine measurements from the air above land and the ocean surface collected by ships, by yours, and sometimes satellites. So, to understand the temperature, you have two water bodies on the earth. As we all know that 71% of the earth is covered by water and 78.9 on 29% is covered by land. So, you have only two bodies on the earth's surface that is land and water. So, the temperature needs to be measured on the land. Okay. Measurement from the air above the land and above the ocean surface. And on the basis of that, they try to calculate the average temperature. The temperature at each, the temperature at each land and ocean station is compared daily to find out what is normal 
for batch location and the time typically the long term average over a 30 years of period so every day the temperature is calculated every day the observations are done on based on those temperatures and after that the long period goes on means a maximum or minimum it should be up to 30 years of period okay after then and then only you can understand that whether uh, what is the exact location and what is the exact temperature of that particular location now whatever differences you get as i have already discussed in this map you can see in the same year in 1985 this blue color denotes the 1985 year in the same year you can see there is a variation in the temperatures okay the temperatures are always changing okay so definitely there are some differences so those variations those differences in the temperature are called as anomalies okay anomalies are of two types first is positive anomaly and second is negative anomaly now what is positive anomaly the positive anomaly is nothing but it is the temperature is warmer than the long term average okay if the temperature is warm then we are going to call it as positive anomaly and if the temperature is cooled then we are going to call it as negative anomaly so anomaly is always they always help the scientists to evaluate the exact temperature of a certain location at a certain time okay so these is what is called as anomalies daily anomalies are averaged together over the whole month means each and every day the anomalies are calculated and an average is taken for calculation of whole month there are in turn used to work out the temperature anomalies for season to season and year to year after that the whole months all the months anomalies are calculated and the average is uh, calculated for the year so this is how <coughs> the season wise year wise as well as month wise you can analysis the particular temperature of a certain location now you can just know few temperatures on the planet so venus is having 456.85 average surface temperature in degree celsius mars has minus 87 to minus 5 average surface temperature in degree celsius even mercury has 465 average surface temperature in degree celsius whereas earth earth has only 14 average surface temperature in degree celsius so this is how it has been calculated okay now we are going to move further to the next table now you can see a graph over here okay look at the graph and answer the following okay in this graph this graph is totally based on global greenhouse gas emission okay so you can see the gases like you have water vapor present in the gas you have carbon dioxide methane okay nitrogen oxide miscellaneous gases okay and you have the contribution of emission means how much it is released inside the atmosphere okay which of the gases has the highest contribution now if you look at this particular graph you can see that water vapor water vapor is having the highest contribution and co2 is the gas which is having the highest contribution okay which of these gases comes from natural and man-made resources so you, you need to require whether which of the gases are natural which are the gases are man-made now co2 can be generated it is also natural because the plants they release a co2 at night the decomposition activity also releases co2 okay so there is a combination of natural as well as man-made sources which activities are responsible for their emission now if you see uh, for carbon dioxide whenever we drive vehicles carbon dioxide nitrogen dioxide these are the pollutants which are released in large amount even the miscellaneous gases are released okay so all these are released because of human activities which are very much disastrous for the 
global warming process okay out of these whose emissions can be controlled by humans so human can control the release of co2 they can control the release of no2 okay so these are the things which can be controlled by humans okay just have a look to the explanation part of this particular uh, graph here the average temperature of the surface of the earth depends on number of factors okay you cannot say that uh, the temperature depends only on the climatic change or a low and high uh, wind air okay it's not like that it depends on several factors these include the time of the day the time of the year and where the temperature measurements are to be taken as we all know within a one day you can see there is difference in the weather in this uh, in the morning it is very much cold as you move towards afternoon it's hot after that in evening then it goes it gets a bit little hot and at night it gets cool down okay so at a certain period of time there is a change okay so there is a change in time of the day time of the year and where at which location the temperature is being measured the average temperature of the earth is around 14 degrees celsius which we have already seen in the table as given in the earlier graph the average temperature has increased by 0.8 degrees celsius now the earth's temperature the average earth's temperature is 14 degrees celsius but currently because of large amount of pollutants like carbon dioxide methane nitrogen dioxide which are released because of human activities the average temperature of earth has been increased by 0.8 degree celsius now you 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 think that 0.8 is such a less amount but no it is not a less amount it you feel as if it is a less amount but it it is making a big impact on the earth okay the average surface temperature of the earth is increasing and is likely to increase it is only because of the impact of gases like carbon dioxide methane etc which has made an which has been enormous it has led to increase in heat holding capacity of the atmosphere which in turn increases the temperature and this phenomena is called as global warming so we all are aware of global warming because of the increase in the temperature the ice is melting day by day and if the ice is melting the water level the sea level is increasing gradually which leads to a disaster and this type of thing is called as global warming so what is a global warming global warming is increase in the heat holding capacity of the atmosphere which in turn increases the temperature of the atmosphere which leads to global warming so is it a big concern or it is a small concern it may sound like 0.8 degree celsius is not a, such a big number but the impact of this rise appears to be phenomenal okay so uh, even though if it is in within 0.8 but the disaster is tremendous okay so we should avoid and we should control the release of harmful gases so this is all about the introduction of lesson number 5 that is global climatic change the remaining part of this chapter will be discussed in the next video thank you for watching do subscribe the channel